Among the most massive launching pads at Cape Canaveral are those of the Atlas missiles, enormous looming structures over 150 feet high. Their concrete pedestals stand a good two stories. From one of these pads 18 months ago, the first Atlas blasted off to explode into fragments. Last week, another soared over its full intercontinental range. Now, the most far-reaching feat of all is in the offing. Fueling has gone without a hitch. Every component checks out flawlessly, and the 10-hour countdown goes into its crucial final moments without any substantial delay. The launching area is cleared. The periscope of the control center blockhouse is unsheathed, and in the massive concrete safety dome, the core of technicians is a muted beehive of activity as the seconds tick away. Of these men, only a handful know the actual course plotted for the Atlas. It's a secret held by 35 men in the entire country. Even the test conductor who actually pushes the firing button knows only that the missile will go its full range. foot missile goes aloft in a near perfect takeoff. Fully loaded to a weight of 122 tons, it hurtles upwards before the enormous thrust of two rocket boosters and the main sustainer engine. Four and a half minutes of powered flight bring it to satellite velocity, 17,000 miles an hour. The missile's own guidance system steers it into orbit, the first time this has been done. With a weight of 8,800 pounds, the Atlas is by far the biggest satellite, more than double the mass of Russia's Sputnik 3. But impressive as is the feat of the Atlas itself and the awesome accuracy of its guidance system, all else is overshadowed by the amazing communication system it carried aloft. The Atlas can receive messages from Earth, record them, and rebroadcast them on a command signal from the ground. A revolutionary new method of space communications was pioneered and given overwhelming dramatic emphasis with the master stroke. The broadcast of President Eisenhower's voice from space. A message received and rebroadcast through all the world. Said the president, through the marvels of scientific advance, my voice is coming to you from a satellite circling in outer space. Through this unique means, I convey to you and to all mankind, America's wish for peace on earth and goodwill toward men everywhere. Here is how the president sounded in his broadcast from the Atlas. This is the president of the United States speaking. Through the marvels of scientific advance, my voice is coming to you 